Hello friends, welcome to my second lecture on Cauchy's Integral Theorem. Here we are going to consider uh, the third case where C is any simple closed curve in the uh, complex plane and we will be showing that integral of fz uh, along C is equal to 0. So, uh, let us say this is your simple closed curve. Let us take any simple closed curve in the complex z plane. Okay. Uh, this is your point z0, then we have z1, we divided this uh, curve C into n parts by means of points z0, z1, z2, z3 and so on zn minus 1 zn, zn coincides with z0. So, choose n points of subdivision z1, z2, zn on the curve C where z0 coincides with zn and so that we, we then we construct this polygon by joining z0 to z1, z1 to z2, z2 to z3, z3 to z4 and so on zn minus 1 to zn. We have already proved that integral over C fz dz equal to 0 if C is a uh, closed polygon. Okay. So, uh, let us define then the sum S n to be equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n f z k delta z k where delta z k equal to z k minus z k minus 1. Actually, some S n is uh, uh, here uh, k equal to 1 to n f z k delta z k here zeta m uh, or you can say zeta k we have chosen as z k. Uh, then see we have earlier when we defined the integral uh, over C fz dz as the limit of a sum, we had written integral over C S n equal to uh, sigma m equal to 1 to n f zeta m delta z m. Okay. As we had seen earlier, zeta m can be chosen arbitrarily uh, on, on the uh, uh, arc of the curve joining z m minus 1 to z m. So, that zeta m is chosen as z m here. Okay. So, let us define S n equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n f z k delta z k where delta z k z k minus z k minus 1. Then we know that uh, S n uh, when n goes to infinity tends, tends to integral over C f z dz where uh, maximum of mod of delta uh, z k 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n goes to 0. So, n goes to 0 in such a way that this maximum length goes to 0. Then uh, limit of S n is equal to this. So, uh, uh, so from this uh, definition, okay, uh, definition of limit uh, for a given epsilon greater than 0, we can find an n naught belonging to the uh, set of natural numbers n such that mod of integral over C f z dz minus S n is less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than n naught. Okay. Now, uh, p is the uh, closed polygon you see here this is p, p is this code polygon joining z naught to z 1, z 1 to z 2 and so on z n minus 1 to z n. So, integral over c uh, integral over uh, p f z d z equal to 0 this we have already proven this is by case 2 okay. in 0 equal to integral over p f z d z. Now, uh, this integral over p f z d z can be written as uh, sigma i equal to 1 to n integral over z i minus 1 to z i f z d z okay? because p consists of the uh, line segments joining z naught to z 1, z 1 to z 2 and so on. So, we can write it as sum of those uh, n integrals okay? and then what I do uh, sigma i equal to 1 to n z integral over z i minus 1 to z i, I subtract f z i here and add f z i. Okay? So, when I add f z i this s n is nothing but uh, sigma i equal to 1 to n integral over z i minus 1 to z i f z i you can say. Okay? So, uh, that I uh, subtract f z i here and add f z i whatever uh, is I am adding that comes inside this S n. Okay? Now, but then this sum is equal to 0. So, S n will be equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n integral over z i minus 1 to z i and then f z i minus f z d z by, uh, by using the fact that this sum is equal to 0 I get S n like this. Okay. Now, let us choose n naught to be so large we have n naught here this n naught let us choose n naught to be so large that uh, on the lines joining z naught and z 1, z 1 and z 2, z n minus 1 and z n mod of f z i minus f z. Okay. Mod of f z i minus f z is less than epsilon by 2. So, then what will happen? this follows from the continuity. Okay. So, mod of f z i minus f z is less than epsilon by 2 l where l is the length of the 
curve C, the given curve C, then mod of S n will be less than epsilon by 2. You can see here mod of S n will be equal to mod of S n will be less than or equal to uh, sigma i equal to 1 to n uh, integral over z i minus 1 to z i okay, mod of f z i minus f z uh, into dz. Okay. So, mod of f z i minus f z is less than epsilon by 2 also this is less than sigma i equal to 1 to n epsilon by 2 l into length of uh, length of the uh, 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 line uh, joining z i to z i minus 1. So, mod of z i minus z i minus 1. Okay. Now, this is equal to epsilon by 2 l sigma i equal to 1 to n mod of z i minus z i minus 1. Okay. And if you see here this length okay, mod of z naught minus z 1 minus z naught plus z 1 minus mod of z 1 minus z 2 mod of z 2 minus z 3 this will be definitely less than the uh, length of uh, uh, this one uh, when uh, you are uh, because this is the length of the polygon of course, some part of the uh, polygon lies outside, but as n goes to infinity this will give us tend to length of the curve. Uh, so, this will be less than epsilon by 2 l into l okay. this will uh, be equal to epsilon by 2. So, when n is sufficiently large this length sigma i equal to 1 to n mod of s i minus z i minus z i minus 1 will tend to uh, L epsilon by 2. So, you can see n naught is sufficiently large. So, this can be uh, mod of S n will be less than epsilon by 2. Now, mod of integral over C f z d z is less than or equal to mod of integral over C f z d z minus S n plus mod of S n and mod of integral over C f z d z minus S n is less than epsilon by 2. This we have seen here okay, for all n z greater than n naught and mod of S n is also less than epsilon by 2. So, this is less than epsilon and epsilon is arbitrary. So, we can say integral over C f z d z equal to 0. So, this is how we prove that integral of f z uh, along any simple closed path is equal to 0. If f z is analytic in a simply connected domain D uh, and C lies inside D. Okay. Now, let us consider a multiply connected domain. We are going to do cos integral theorem for multiply connected domain. So, let us consider doubly connected domain here. You, the boundary of the domain consists of two parts. Okay. So, uh, let us name them as C1 and C2. So, this is my C1 and this is C2. Okay. Uh, let us construct a cross cut, a cross cut AH. Then, what we do, we, uh, what do we see? We see is the boundary of the region R, which consists of A, B, a b d e f g a and h j h j i h okay h j i h traversed in the sense that an observer walking on the boundary of the region r all uh, boundary always has the region r on its left okay then what do we see you can see integral over uh, a b d e uh, f g a okay, uh, and then I move along this direction h okay, j i uh, then I come back to h I move in this direction a okay, this is equal to 0, because now by taking a cross cut we have see we have found a simple closed curve okay. and then I break it into parts. So, integral over a b d e a b d e f g a then integral over a h then integral over uh, h j i h and then integral over uh, h a this is equal to 0. Okay. Integral over a h and integral over h a cancel okay. and then I write integral over a b uh, d e f g a. Okay. 
A B D E F G A and H J I H. Okay, so integer over H J I H. And our C consists of A B D E F G A and H J I H. So we can say that this gives us integral over C F J D J equal to zero. So this is the Cauchy integral theorem for a multiply connected domain. Now let us look at Cauchy uh, consequences of Cauchy integral theorem. Suppose we have a simple closed curve C uh, in the Cauchy's theorem. Uh, we can divide it into two arcs. Okay, C1 and C2 star. So uh, this is my curve C. Okay, this is my curve C. I divide it into two parts uh, by uh, from Z1 to Z2. This is my uh, C1 curve. Okay. and then c2 star is this so then you can see integral over if this is uh, a uh, b c and here i take a point f then integral over a b uh, c f a uh, c f a f z d z equal to 0 now this gives you integral over c1 c1 joins z1 to z2 Z1 I have named as A, Z2 I have named as C. So uh, integral over C1 f z d z equal to zero, and then integral over this is uh, C f a is C f a C2 star. So integral over uh, uh, C2 star. Okay. Uh, let us divide the part C in Cauchy into two, two arcs C1 and C2 star. This this is my C1 and this is C2 star. So integral over C2 star will be equal to zero. Okay. Now this will give you integral over C1 f z d z equal to minus integral over C2 star f z d z. And if you reverse the sense of integration along C2 star, then I get C2 curve, so in, this gives you integral over C1 f z d z equal to integral over C2. So in a so what it actually tells us that in a uh, simply connected domain, if you take uh, any two points z1 and z2, okay, and then you take and uh, you take uh, join z1 to z2, integral of f z. Okay, along any path that joins Z1 to Z2 and lies inside the simply connected domain remains same. It does not change. I mean, I joined a Z1 to Z2 by the uh, uh, curve C1. I get whatever value I get. I get the same value if I join Z1 to Z2 by other curve C2. Okay, so this is the property of the analytic functions. Now. Uh, So this is integral over c1 equal to integral over c2. Now, hence, if f z is analytic in a simply connected domain D and c1, c2 are any two paths in D which have no uh, further points in common, then integral over c1 f z f d z becomes integral over uh, integral of f z uh, d z over c2. Okay. Now, if c1 and c2 have finitely many points in common, then also this equation holds. Let's see how we get that. Suppose this curve. Okay, z1 and z2 are joined by Uh, the two curves C1 and C2, okay, which have uh, this point, this point S, and this point common. Okay, so there are finitely many points that are common. Then what I do? Integral uh, along C1, integral along C1, integral along C2. We have to show that integral along C1 f z d z is equal to integral along C2 f z d z. So in order to prove this, I consider first this part. uh this part this part so in parts we'll consider integral along the so let me call it as a this is b and this is uh let me say c and this is d and this is e okay so then integral let me take a point c or c so integral along acb okay integral along acb fz dz Okay, it is equal to integral along A P B. We can do it in parts by our previous result. Okay, so integral over A C B is equal to integral over A P B. Similarly, integral over uh, 
b to this one c okay by taking uh, other points q and then you can take here point r integral over b q c is equal to integral over b r c and then integral over uh, uh, c s t ok. So, let us say this is s point ok c s d is equal to integral over c t d and lastly we consider this one ok. So, let me say u here and b here ok. So, d u e is equal to integral over t b e So, now add these uh, all these equations ok, add all these equations we get integral over c 1 f z d z equal to integral over c 2 f z d z ok. So, if the two curves c 1 and c 2 have finitely many points in common then again integral over c 1 f z d z equal to integral over c 2 f z d z. In fact, it can be shown that if c 1 and c 2 have infinitely many points in common then also this result holds ok. So, now let us uh, so integral over c 1 is always equal to integral over c 2 uh, if the function f z is analytic in a simply connected domain d and c 1 and c 2 lie completely inside uh, d which join any two points z 1 and z 2 inside d ok. Now, let us look at this uh, property of analytic functions. See uh, integral over c 1 f z d z equal to integral over c 2 f z d z can be imagined as if c 2 has been obtained from c 1 by a continuous deformation of path. You can see if you continuously deform c 1 which and keep z 1 and z 2 fixed ok continuous deformation if you do we will come to this ok. So, uh, by continuous deformation of c 1 which joins z 1 and z 2 ok we can obtain the curve c 2. So, by if you continuously deform a, uh, uh, the path which joins any two points z 1 and z 2 in the comp, uh, in inside a simply connected domain the integral of the function does not change that is what it says. So, uh, if in 4 if in this 4 integral over c 1 f z d z f, f z d z equal to integral over c 2 f z d z we imagine that uh, uh, the path c 2 is obtained from c 1 by continuous deformation then uh, in a given contour integral we may continuously deform the contour keeping the end points fixed without changing the value of the integral provided we do not pass through a point where f z is not analytic this is known as principle of deformation of path. Now, let us show that uh, integral over c f z d z equal to 0 in the case where c is the boundary of a ring shaped region bounded by circle c 1 and c 2 as shown in this figure ok and also deduce that integral over c 1 1 by z d z equal to integral over c 2 1 by z d z. Now, here you can see we are having two circles ok the circle c 1 has radius b center origin the circle c 2 has radius a and center origin ok. We have joined the two uh, circles by a cross cut this cross cut a b ok. Then what do we notice if we use Cauchy integral theorem the integral over this one ok integral over this is my curve c 1 this is my curve c 2 ok. So, uh, here integral over uh, uh, by the uh, this one we have earlier done this Cauchy integral theorem for a multiply connected domain ok. By using Cauchy integral theorem for a multiply connected domain integral over c 1 will be equal to integral over c 2. Here we are taking the integral clock by direction along c 1 as well as the clock by direction along c 2. We have seen in the Cauchy integral theorem for a multiply connected domain that integral along the uh, two boundaries ok remains equal 
uh, uh, and the sense also is same. So, here the sense is uh, anti clockwise direction along C1, so along C2 also it is clockwise. Okay. So, integral over C1 1 by z dz equal to integral over C2 1 by z dz by using the multiply connected uh, cos integral theorem for a multiply connected domain. What we will do is we will move along the curve and then the cross cut okay, so that it becomes a simple closed curve and then the integral will be 0 by cos integral theorem integral along a b uh, will cancel because we once we will move, move from a to b and once we will move from b to a and we will be able to get this. Now, let us evaluate uh, line integrals by indefinite integral cos integral theorem uh, can be used to evaluate uh, integrals uh, by indefinite integral you can see suppose fz is analytic in a simply connected domain d then this integral let us look at this integral this is a function of z for all paths which lie in d and join z0 and z let us take any uh, domain d okay say z0 is a point here and z is another point okay then integral uh, of fw uh, with respect to w from z0 to z where z0 and z can be joined by any curve which lies wholly inside d okay so then this is a function of z i can uh, i denote it by fz okay and this uh, because z can take any value so this is a function of z and this is called an indefinite integral of fz so we uh, by our previous theorem fz is independent of the path we have earlier seen okay that the value of fz will remain uh, same uh, if if we 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 can join them uh, we can join z naught to z by any curve okay as long as the curve lies uh, completely inside d the length the, the value of the uh, integral does not change so by our previous theorem fz is independent of the path joining z naught and z provided fz is analytic in d and the path lies wholly inside d the function fz defined in this uh, equation is analytic in d and its derivative is fz so we are going to show that this function fz equal to z0 to z fw dw is analytic and uh, its derivative is equal to fz so we are going to show that fz is analytic for all z in d and f prime z equal to fz okay so what do you do is let us consider we want let us consider uh, in the domain d we have z not here if z is any point let us keep it fixed and let us take another point z plus delta z which is also inside d okay the domain d then f z plus delta z let us consider f z plus delta z minus f z okay divided by let us consider f z plus delta z minus f z divided by delta z. So, this will be a y definition integral of integral from z naught to z plus delta z f w d w minus integral from z naught to z f w d w into 1 by delta z. Okay. Now, uh, I can write it as uh, minus z naught to z I can write as z to z naught. So, z to z naught then z naught to z plus delta z will be equal to 1 over delta w integral z to z plus delta z f w d w okay. and then I can uh, this will give me uh, f z plus delta z minus f z divided by delta z minus f prime z let me subtract f prime z both sides f z both sides. So, then this will be equal to uh, 1 by delta z 1 by delta z integral z to z plus delta z uh, f w minus this I can do because z is independent of w z is fixed ok this z is fixed. So, f z is a constant ok. So, integral over z to z plus delta z d w will be delta z delta z delta z will cancel. So, this f z I can bring inside the integral ok. So, now what we do 
So, thus we have Okay, we have this. Okay, now what I do is this is my domain. Okay, here is Z naught, here is Z, and here is Z plus delta Z. Okay, by the continuity, of FZ at Z. Okay we have for a given epsilon greater than 0 there exists delta greater than 0 such that uh, mod of f w minus f z is less than epsilon uh, whenever mod of w minus z is less than delta. Let us choose delta z to be so small that uh, mod of delta z is less than delta. If we do that, then what will happen? Mod of f z plus delta z minus f z divided by delta z okay minus f z will be less than or equal to 1 over uh, mod of delta z into mod of integral over z to z plus delta z f w minus f z uh, d w. Okay, so we choose delta z to be so small that the line segment joining z to z plus delta z lies completely inside the domain. Okay, and then what will happen? Mod of uh, f w minus f z will be less than epsilon for all w such that mod of z w minus z is less than delta. So uh, mod of uh, n for any w lying between z to z plus delta z. Okay, uh, this will be uh, less than. Uh, delta. Okay, so what we'll have? This is less than one by delta z into epsilon times delta z. We have this. Okay, mod of f w minus f z will be less than epsilon, and we'll have mod of uh, z plus delta z minus z, which is mod of delta z. So this is this will cancel, and we'll get this is less than epsilon. Okay, so since epsilon greater than zero is arbitrary. Uh, we, uh, the uh, the since uh, since epsilon greater than zero is arbitrary, it follows that limit delta z tends to zero. Uh, f z plus delta z minus f z over delta z is equal to f z, which implies that uh, f prime z is equal to f z ok. So, uh, f z is differentiable ok, f z is differentiable at any z and therefore, f z is analytic and further that f prime z is equal to f z. So, this is how we prove this theorem, uh, where we have uh, shown that uh, the uh, the integral of uh, a function f z which is analytic in a simply connected domain can be evaluated easily by indefinite integral. Uh, with this, I would like to end my lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.